Hello and welcome to Little Drops of Wonderful. This is my channel to talk about all things knitting and crochet and all of the lovely crafty things that I love and to catch you up on what I've been up to over the past month. So this is my October catch up and I've got lots to catch you up on. There's uh, some Strictly Sock Along prizes to draw, lots of socks to talk about. I've got one finished thing and just generally lots of crafty stuff. It's going to be a long one. So make yourself a cup of tea or pour yourself a glass of something relaxing, <laughs> depending on what time of day it is you're watching this. Uh, my name is Ali. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Ali. And I also vlog on my other channel, which is this little wonderful life. And I've just finished doing Vlogtober. So today is Tuesday the 7th. The 7th? Yeah, Tuesday the 7th of November. Uh, so I finished a week ago. It doesn't feel like a week ago. It was a lot quicker than that. Uh, doing Vlogtober. So that has been a big feature of what went on in, in October, looking back. I did get quite a lot of making done, which obviously I'm going to show you now. And one thing finished. I also was really ill in October, which knocked me sideways a bit. I had some slight issues with my uh, J pouch, which I have. If you don't know what a J pouch is, I talk about it all the time because I don't have a bow. I have a J pouch instead, which is an internal arrangement. I will link underneath the vlog that I made during Vlogtober where I explained it all because uh, that was a really sort of well received vlog, like explaining what it was all about. And quite a few people commented to say they had relatives going through similar things and it was really helpful. So I will link that underneath in case it's of interest or of use to you. Uh, I've already gone off on a tangent. I put a little note to myself to not talk for more than three minutes at the beginning. So <laughs> let's say Strictly is in full swing now, but our girls' social lives have really taken off as well. So we seem to spend all of our time driving about and dropping them places. And Saturday nights have become a bit of a uh, in and out of the house zone. So we tend to catch up on Strictly on Sundays and we watch the whole thing and then straight into the results show. So I get a really good chunk of sitting and knitting time unless I'm stopping to watch the actual dancing. And I've managed to finish one pair of Strictly socks already, which for me, at this stage in the Strictly sock along, is nothing short of miraculous. I'm normally really slow. Uh, we've also been doing some university visits and we had half term as well. So it's been a really full on month. And this morning, it's now about half past 10. I wanted to start filming about an hour ago. So I've been, I spent the whole morning for about half past seven organising all the Strictly prizes. I've still got more coming to add to the sort of overall prize pile at the end, uh, but I've been organising them all so I can draw prizes today and I know what's coming. So I feel very productive and organised now. But okay, we're just over three minutes. So I'm gonna move straight into finished objects of which I had have one. Oh, and actually I should probably mention what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my ranunculus. I love this so much. I love the sleeve length. I love how lovely and soft the yarn is. Um, this is Bunham Yarns. It's kind of a sport weight in the colour, I think it's called Crazy Rich. I think that's what it was called. And I love this, but I, when I originally blocked it, it kind of came down to here. But it's kind of bounced back up, so it kind of sits here. And that's too short for me. And I do have yarn left, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip back the rib, which is kind of upsetting, rip back the rib and then knit to the length that it is now and then add the rib again. I've got enough yarn to do that. I don't have enough time to do that, but I've got the yarn to do that. But that will mean that I will wear this, I think, all the time. I've also got a black vest underneath it, which I don't really need to wear, I don't think, but I was, I was already wearing a vest and I just put it on over the top so yeah oh and something else to mention is I'm trying a new thing with the sound I've actually got a microphone uh, plugged in and it's attached to my iPhone so I'm going to attempt to record the sound separately and I hope that works if it doesn't I'm hoping that it will still successfully record the sound on the camera otherwise I'm going to be crying into my laptop later when I come to edit it right finish things in my lovely Dawn's Days bag, which is by Dawn at the Woven Almanac, her original channel, her, her blogging channel is Dawn's Days. 
but her knitting channel is the Woven Almanac. In fact, because I finished this, I don't want to put this bag away. I might actually use this bag for another project that's in one of my dodgy bags and put the dodgy bag away instead. So in here is my first pair of finished Strictly socks and I don't have my sock blockers. Hold on one sec. Right, I've got my sock blockers. These aren't actually blocked. I'm not going to block them. I'm just going to start wearing them or one of the girls will start wearing them. So these are a crochet pair of socks and this is a really successful pair of crochet socks. I'm really pleased with them. Talk amongst yourselves whilst I faff about with these and get them on the blocker. Okay, so this is a crochet sock pattern by Diane Ramsey of Adaday Designs. It's the Rundle socks and I have made them using Little French Meadow yarn in the colour Charleston. Little French Meadow, Meadow? Meadow no longer dye. Yeah, it's called the Charleston anymore, but I had some lovely Strictly themed yarn that I'd been saving and I've cast it all on now, so I'm really excited to be using it at last. And it couldn't have worked better in these socks. It just, it just, the colours distributed so well with the crochet stitches and the mini came with it as well. So this is the, uh, the mini that came with the sock set. Uh, I'm really pleased and the, the pattern was really fun to do and crochet is my first love. And I think this is why this is finished. Uh, th these are finished first because I really turned to this during October as a project because I find when I'm unwell or I'm struggling in any way, just checking that's still recording on my phone, uh, I turned to crochet. It's what I did when I was really poorly uh, in my th 30s when I first discovered crochet and when I was in and out of hospital and after my operations and everything like that. It was always crochet, always crochet in a hospital bed or in waiting rooms and I had so many conversations with nurses uh, interested in what I was doing. I probably started half the NHS off crocheting I think at some point. Um, yeah so I think I turned to this because I was so unwell. My first thing to turn to as a comfort craft is always crochet and I just loved working on these. I really found the pattern really good. I had some problems with measurement uh, let me just check my notes if I've got anything else to say. So I made, um, originally I was going to make the size 4, not foot size 4, but pattern size 4, based on all the measurements given. There's a lot of information given about how to decide what size to make. I had to go down to a 2mm hook as well, because I am a loose crocheter and a loose knitter. So I went down to a 2mm hook, uh, but the size pattern size 4 was way too big, even using all the measurements and everything. So I then went down to a size three and that worked perfectly. So this is a two millimeter hook, size three pattern size, and they've come out brilliantly. I also didn't knit them to quite to the length that the pattern said, I knit them shorter, knowing that I was having problems with size and that uh, that was brilliant too. I just I just did it, I kept trying it on and working it out. I just realized I've still got a stitch mark on here as well. How gorgeous is that? I got, the, this was a present from uh, Conchetta at Butternut Handmade and she sent a prize for the Strictly Sock Along and she popped this in for me. I'll show you the prize in a bit when we talk about the Strictly Sock Along. So I popped it straight on the project I was working on. So I shall move that to another project. And those are my Rundle socks. Really pleased with them. Can't wait to start wearing them. They're really, they're a bit thicker than knitted socks. They will fit perfectly well in my boots and they'll be really brilliant for really cold days. And I often save crochet socks for welly socks, you know, if we're going for a muddy walk. But actually, I think these will work really well as everyday, very warm everyday socks, but socks that can easily be worn in normal boots, not just wellies. I'm so happy with them. So happy. That's my only finished object. So I've got a lot of whips, a lot, a lot of works in progress. And the last video that I made was all about casting on all the yarn and all the projects for my Strictly socks. So I have got on the go my Drippity Drop socks by Kay Jones using Green Lampkin yarn. I have to work out which bag they're in. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. Here it is. 
living in my Strictly Sock Along 2021 bag, which was made by lovely Julie. That's so unique. I've got a lovely little crochet decoration on there and I've got my glitter ball. Oh, none of that focused. And this is the Ballroom Bliss. This is one of the official Strictly Sock Along colourways this year. So uh, they're in Suzanne's shop at Green Lampkin Yarn. I will link them underneath. Uh, she does, there's two colourways. There's Ballroom, Ballroom Bliss and Latin Love. And she does them on sparkle and non-sparkle base. This is a non-sparkle of Ballroom Bliss. It's just beautiful. My caking up isn't very beautiful. But the yarn is beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Just looks like the soft colours of a lovely waltz going on underneath the lights. And oh, just lovely. Got one of my hairs on me. And I'm making the drippity drop socks. So I've cast them on. Uh, but I haven't got very far. I think I've done like the first pattern repeat or something. But you can see here how it's knitting up really lovely. Just done a, I started them with a, a two by two twisted rib. I can't remember if that's part of the pattern or not, but I really love twisted rib. So I tend to do that all the time. Uh, the Drippity Drop Socks I've made before and they're a lovely pattern. I think they're my favorite pair of socks, the ones I pull out of my drawer most. So I'm really looking forward to having another pair of those, but I haven't made much progress. So that's my first pair. I've also got the Swiss Dot Socks by Nancy Wheeler, which is living in my little uh, Joe Pickle Lily pouch. I love these little pouches that she does. They're perfect for socks. And I've got a new pin on here. This was a gorgeous gift. And it is a pin by um, Les Garçons, who are a, a couple, oh, I can't remember. They've got a podcast. I will link them underneath. I haven't watched them yet, but they come highly recommended. And I, I think one of them is an illustrator. I think that's why I've got this gorgeous little... Uh, th this is why they sell this gorgeous little pin and other things. It's a little Highland Coo in a knitted jumper with a nice warming drink. I like to think it's hot chocolate, although there is a tea bag thing there, so maybe it's a nice herbal tea. So this is the Swiss Dot Socks, which is a pattern by Nancy Wheeler of Knit Zip Happy. And I've made a little bit of progress on this. I've worked out how to do the dots. It took me a little while to get my head around it, but now I have. I'm really excited to see how these are going to come out. Have I done that right? Yeah. Uh, DPNs, as usual. I knit all my socks on DPNs, and that's just my preferred way. I've, I've knit my socks in many different ways over the years, but I've settled on DPNs because I find that the most enjoyable. So you can just about see the little dots appearing there and you work it with contrast colour down the throughout so you get the little contrast at the top and then you'll have a little contrast uh, garter line throughout the pattern so because this was a sock set with a mini a contrast mini I thought that would be really really nice and I'm going to make them as I think they are shorty socks anyway I'm not sure but I'm going to make them as shorty socks but again I haven't made much progress on those and I think these are going to be the ones I work on the most next, like dedicate the most time to. So in fact, I'm going to chuck that at the sofa over there so I can work on them later. I also cast on the Ada socks by Caroline Corley and the Chicken Scratch socks by Lauren Colby. And I haven't made any progress on those at all other than those first few rows of cast on. So I won't show those. But if you want to have a look at the yarn and the bags and everything, that's in the last video for the Strictly Cast On. It was really fun to sort of do that. And then, speaking of crochet, I had another... Oh, no, hang on. I've got another pair of socks here. Oh, goodness, yes, my cotton socks. Uh, I've been working on some cotton socks with some yarn I bought when I was on a work trip. And I was really fascinated to find out how that would work. So it's King Cole Summer 4-ply is what I bought. I was in Manchester and I found a yarn shop, of course. <laughs> so I've been knitting up. Do you like my little DPN holder, by the way? This is from Knitting I Love. I've had this for years. So clever. It's just like a little popper. It's made of felt. Just a little popper for your to hold your DPNs. So these are coming along well, 
But I had a little blip. I'm just making them as shorty socks because I wasn't sure how they were going to work out. But actually, they're, they're working out really well. I'm really pleased with them. But when I came to do pick up the stitches for the gusset, I went a bit wrong and I had to go back. And then when I went back, the stitches are kind of stretched, which kind of makes me a bit worried about how this yarn's going to behave when I start wearing the socks. So I don't know if you can see how much that stretch there. So I think what I'm going to do is actually have to go back and do the heel again or see if I, I don't know, or does it bother me enough? It's really nice on one side, nice and tight. And then on this side, it just stretched too much. Oh, I don't know. No point knitting it if it's going to bother me. Hmm. Not sure. But otherwise, I'm really pleased with how they look, how the yarn feels, how soft they are, how fun it is to knit. Um, yeah. I'm not sure whether to go back and start the heel again so I don't have those stretched stitches or not. Hmm. Well, that is another work in progress and probably one I need to crack on with, otherwise I'm just going to get scared a bit, aren't I? Because I need to make a decision and then it won't get done. I might throw this one on the sofa as well. Then I started two new things, completely new. Like I said, crochet has kind of come to the forefront for me uh, because of not feeling very well. And I wanted a really nice, easy crochet project to work on. Just checking that my iPhone's still going. I'm gonna keep doing that. If I do that, just assume that's because I'm checking it's still going. Uh, where did I put the thing? Oh, it's over there. So I decided to start a crochet project that every crocheter seems to have made except for me and I'm not sure I can call myself a crocheter unless I actually do end up making this. So the pattern in question is the virus shawl. I'll get onto that in a minute. I just want to show you the bag. This bag is by this this Lizzie Sews. No, she's got a couple of different names. Uh, she makes and sells stuff. On, this Lizzie Sews on Facebook and Instagram and she shares her knitting stuff as this, lit this Lizzie knits. So it's this Lizzie sews, if you're interested in the bag. And it's a patchwork chicken bag. Look at all those lovely chickens. What's that one? Oh, and it's got the names of flowers there as well. Oh, I just love it. And it's got that, it's so cheerful and spring-like, isn't it? And lots of yellow as well. And it's got this gorgeous sheepy, spring sheep lining. So pretty. So I've had this bag for a little while and I had some yarn that was given to me by uh, Leslie, a fellow Kent dweller like myself here in the southeast of England. She sent me some lovely yarn as a gift and one of the things she sent was a whirl, a shipyard's whirl in the colour Black Forest Zinger. Here's how it looks. And I thought, well, that would be good to try a virus shawl with. It's cotton. I think it's cotton. Feels like cotton. Is it cotton? 60% a collin, a collin, a collin, a cotton. 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And I thought this would be great to have like a gradient. Uh, I, I see a lot of the virus shawls are kind of in gradient whirls. So I started off, I went and found the pattern so the pattern, oh, sorry if you can hear next door's dog barking. So the pattern is by, I think it's an old pattern. I think it's like a traditional pattern, but it's been written up and a tutorial made by Woolpedia. So I started off using the free YouTube tutorials. Then I got a bit lost with it and I wanted something to refer to written down. So I thought, well, the pattern's like four pounds. So I thought I'll buy the pattern. <sighs> But I'm not really getting on with the pattern. I'm finding the pattern really confusing. It's just not gelling in my head. So this morning I actually went to have a look at all the projects and see if I can find any sort of tips and things. And there are quite a few tips to other tutorial videos. So I think I'm gonna go and have a look at that later uh, because I did have to stop last night thinking, I'm not sure I'm doing this right, even looking at the pattern. So first of all, I started from the middle and I started with the pink. 
Then I realised that of course it is bottom up, not top down. And I wanted to end at the bottom with the light grey so it faded from dark down to grey rather than the other way around. So I stopped and I shoved that back in the middle <laughs> to undo later. And then I started from the outside with the grey. So I think I'm up to like row nine or something. And then I think I've done something where I think I've misunderstood the pattern. So later today, after I've edited this, I'm gonna go and have a look at a tutorial by, I think it's Fiber Spider, a few people had mentioned. So I'm gonna go and have a look at that and get myself back on track because I can sense that once I do get it, it's gonna be lovely. Rel at the Dabbling Hook makes a virus shawl quite often and they always look gorgeous. She makes it in thicker yarn. This is a uh, four ply. It's quite a lightweight four ply yarn. I've got a thousand meters, so I'm just gonna use the whole thing. Even if it means it's absolutely massive, I just wanna do it for the pleasure of doing it and seeing how the colors come out. Uh, yeah, so that's where I am. I've got kind of what looks like a pair of knickers. <laughs> a bit risque, very lacy knickers, but knickers nonetheless. And yeah, so that's my first ever virus shawl. Have you made one? Have you made a virus shawl? Did you enjoy it? Um, if you've got any tips for how to sort of get that repeating, I think it's only a four row repeat, uh, do let me know in the comments. And yeah, definitely link me or point me towards your finished ones. I'd love to see them. I'm definitely enjoying it so far and I think it's going to be fun. The yarn's quite splitty sometimes, but I think I'll get over that. This is a 3.5 millimetre hook. It's a metal one. It's got quite a sharp point on it. Maybe I need to change to like a less sharp one. And it won't be so splitty then, but yeah. So that is living in my chicken bag by this Lizzie uh, sews. And thank you very much to Leslie at Bearstead Bears for the lovely, lovely uh, yarn, which I seem to remember when you dropped it off. Well, you did drop it off. It was your lovely husband dropped it off. And I wondered why there was a scaffolder at my door. I was like, did I order scaffolding? <laughs> but no, it was Leslie's husband. <laughs> so that's my other work in progress. And then the other thing that I've started which is actually the most urgent thing, is living in a really beautiful project uh, bag. It's a plastic box. Um, it's made by really useful boxes. Um, and I bought it at Asda George. So if you're in the market for such a beautiful plastic box, <laughs> um, the reason it's in a plastic box is because this is where I've been storing a load of cotton yarn. Many moons ago, I was given a huge box of cotton yarn by a lovely viewer called Gillian. I've since used it for a variety of different projects, mainly amigurumi, and I've got some projects in mind for like summer garments as well. But I love using cotton for amigurumi, and I had a huge amount of the cream colour, so it all went into this box on its own. And I had others as well, loads of other different colours that went into another box or another couple of boxes. And then Phoebe requested a mum made project for her birthday this year. She'll be 13 at the end of this month. And I thought that she wasn't that interested, but she requested it herself. She went into the cupboard and pulled out Edward's Menagerie and uh, picked out a pattern and said, will you make this for my birthday? And I want it giant. She said, I want it really big. So she's picked out the draft, and the draft is called, what's the draft called? Oh, there's a little, Caitlin. I'm trying to show this without showing the pattern. So there's Caitlin, the draft. So, so far I have only made two legs. <laughs> so this is the legs. I'm holding the uh, cotton yarn, which is DK uh, quadruple. And I am using a 5.5 millimeter hook. It's nothing fancy. I just put a huge lump of Fimo around it in a really unartistic way. <laughs> it's really bad, but it's really comfortable to hold. I did do a little thumb thing, which is good because when we are working with quadruple cotton, it yeah, it's hard going. So I made two legs which I'm quite pleased with. 
and I've made the beginnings of the other two legs because obviously a giraffe has four legs not two legs and two arms and then I'll be doing the body and the head and everything but what I was thinking of doing is the giraffe has got patches like the little giraffe markings Oops. Like her little her little markings on her body here and also uh no there isn't an and also it's just on the body so i was thinking of maybe getting some like super sh soft sort of banil chenille sort of blanket yarn uh to make the patches so there's really strokeable bits because the cotton's soft and it's lovely and it, and it holds so well for amigurumi but i also want her to have bits on it that are really soft and tactile and lovely to sort of run your fingers over. So I'm gonna to pop to Hobbycraft uh, down the road and see if they've got any of that. If not, I might have to turn to an online place. So I guess it would be a bulky weight and it would need to be like a brown or sort of a light brown orangey color for the, for the draft markings, but nice and soft. I can hold it double with a bit of cotton to make sure I get a good tension with it, but that's what I would like to do. But I haven't got much time to do it, so this is gonna be my main focus, I think, in the next week or so, because her birthday's on the 30th. So that only gives me three weeks to do it, and I've got other things to do as well. Also, a lot of you have been asking about my Christmas jumper. So I've been making separate videos about that, and you will have noticed that there hasn't been an update in a while. And that is because I feel that I may have failed with it. I've made progress, but I had a little bit of a problem. I had to start again in that when I joined in the new yarn that I bought, it was a completely different dye lot and very noticeable. So I've started again with the different yarn and I'm further on than I was originally. And I'm, I am really enjoying it, but it's not gonna be finished for this Christmas unless I spent the whole of November just working on that exclusively. And I can't because I've got Phoebe's birthday, so our anniversary coming up, we've got parties to organise for her and all kinds of things. It's just not going to get done. So I am going to make another update video explaining everything and showing you it. Uh, but I think it's going to have to be Project Christmas Jumper into 2024. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I feel like you know, I, I was feeling a bit like, oh, I feel a bit of a failure for that. And then I reminded myself that it's just knitting. Not, it's not about accomplishing, it's about enjoying the process and enjoying the finished thing and yeah. But I will give you a flash of the bag it's in because it's just, I, every time I see this bag I'm so happy. Lemon Tree Corner is who it's by. It is Alice themed and it's just a gorgeous Alice print. This is a gorgeous bag by the way. I think she's based in Australia, I can't remember. Um, but I'll link her shop underneath. It's just gorgeous and it's got pockets at the front. So I've got my little notebook in here, I've got a pen and everything and it's brilliant. It'll probably get a bit too small for a jumper project eventually, but oh, I've also got a little bag charm from Suzanne at Green Lumpkin Yarns and it's a little chicken, the bell. <laughs> and there's a little bag handle on here as well. Honestly, it makes me happy just looking at it. I love it. Okay, so that's everything that I've been kind of starting and working on in the month of vlog, uh, month of vlogtober, <laughs> October on my brain, in the month in the month of October, and looking ahead to November, my making plans for November would be finish the draft. That is non-negotiable. That draft has to be done before the thirtieth. In fact, I would probably like to finish it by the twentieth and get it done, so I'm not having a panic and I might like to make him a little scarf or maybe some leg warmers or something I'm not sure if I get time and then I've got the all the Strictly socks so I definitely want to decide what I'm doing with the cotton socks and I definitely want to work on my Swiss dot socks and I'd like to get as much done as I can on all of the socks I've cast on though I'm under no illusions that I'm going to get them any of them finished or progress very much but you know, December is all about the advents and Vlogmas will be going on. So I would like to have a bit of a clearer deck so I can work on advent projects and yeah, just try and enjoy. I just want to enjoy working on my projects really next month and into December. I think that's my main goal is pick a project and enjoy it, which makes sense, doesn't it? That's why we do it. I would also definitely like to start 
but this is probably more of a December thing. Another scrappy, scrappy triangle project because I washed this the other day and it was hanging out on the line and I was looking at it thinking, I would like another one. And I've got advents coming, so I could start another one. This took me over three years to make with advent yarns, but uh, yeah, I would like another one. I think that this is my, the most used blanket in the house. Everyone fights over it, so we could do with another one. Okay, before we move on and talk about what we're going to talk about next, patterns on my radar, which is all patterns that have come to my attention this past month, and this is going to, it's going to be good. <laughs> and all the Strictly Sock Along prizes, and what else? So we're going to talk about patterns on my radar, Strictly Sock Along prizes, and then a few things to mop up at the end. But before we do that, I... Uh, want to talk about the sponsor for this video. Serious Lights, or Serious Readers, who make Serious Lights, are sponsoring this video. I've been working with them on this channel and my vlogging channel over the next couple of months. And I'm really, really happy to be doing so because I am a huge fan of Serious Lights and I'm a huge fan of this particular one. <laughs> and you're, you've seen me talking about this a lot and you've probably seen me using it a lot because you've I, I, I do, I, use, I used it a lot during Vlogtober, I'll use it even more during Vlogmas because it is the reason why I am going to be able to, they're basically sponsoring the knitting of my Strictly socks <laughs> because it's the only way I can get them done, sitting on the sofa, watching Strictly with everyone around us, candles on, popcorn on the go and then I'm just on the corner of the sofa with my light on like this. What beam is that on at the moment? There we go. I have it on the lowest bit. You can adjust the, the width of the beam, you see. I have it on the lowest uh, width. And you can also adjust the brightness of it. And I have it on the lowest. And that is plenty because uh, it, it's such a concentrated thing. I'm going to put some B-roll in, actually, whilst I'm talking because that will probably be more interesting than me just pointing at it so you can actually see it in action. And whilst you're watching that, I'll be able to tell you that with my link, you can get £100 off a high definition Sirius Light and free delivery. All products in the Sirius Lights range benefit from a five year warranty and they're a UK brand. They're built here in the UK and they're also so lovely to work with. The light is uh, uses daylight wavelength technology, which uh, I know I say this all the time and I don't actually have to say this. But I can if I want, but I feel it's necessary to say it because it what set, it's what sets it apart from, say, just having a reading light next to me, is that it uses this daylight wavelength technology which replicates as close as technically possible the daylight spectrum. So you really feel like you're getting a very natural light which doesn't strain your eyes. So I can work under it for a long time and not feel like I'm getting a headache or that I'm getting tired or something. So I do feel it's important to mention that. So yeah, my link is underneath. I'll also put it in a pinned comment. £100 off and free delivery is an amazing offer. So thank you so much to the people at Serious uh, Readers who make Serious Lights uh, for sponsoring this video. Uh, I really appreciate it and I really love my light. I hope you enjoyed that footage as well of me sort of battling away with draft limbs, which is basically going to be me for the next two weeks. <laughs> it's the what I love making amigurumi, but I hate making legs and arms. Although it is a bit easier when they're big and chunky, but when they're small and fiddly, oh, it's the worst part for me. Everything else I love. Right, let's move on to patterns on my radar. So last time I was talking about some yarn I might have accidentally bought, and that was from... Uh, Almas at Witchy Crafty Lady. So I went to the Southern Wool Show and I was very restrained and I didn't buy any yarn and then I came home and she was having a sale and I immediately ordered uh, six skeins of uh, Corridale in the colourway Lime. It's a sport weight and I've got six skeins of it. Each skein is 240 metres. So I have got, <laughs> you can now watch me do maths live, so I've got, so two of them is 480, which means four of them is 800, no, but, oh. This is gonna be too painful for everybody to endure. Where's my phone? Oh, my phone's recording the thing. Phoebe will have worked it out by now. She'd be shouting it. 
Let's use Google. 6 times 240. Thanks, Google. I got 1,440 metres. So I mentioned this last time. I probably did the same terrible display of maths last time as well. And a few people left comments with really good suggestions for patterns. And I also had some really good comments for my planned big yellow garment project that is still in deciding the deciding phase. And I've got a couple of others as well and a gift. Uh, so I thought I'd share all of them because they were brilliant. So the first one, I'm going to move so that I've got plenty of room to put all the details up here. So the first one that was suggested for the green yarn was the Amy Cardigan by Hoagie Logatelli. It's an $8 pattern, which is about £6.80 at the moment. Uh, it's for a sport weight uh, and it's knit. It's a lovely, relaxed, oversized cardigan and it's got loads of really lovely variations of how people have made it on Ravelry, like they've done it stripy or they've done it in one colour, or they've done it like with scrappy yarn. Um, and I really like that a lot. I like the feel of it. It's something that I can see myself wearing. And another one that was suggested, which is also for a sport weight, and is also knitted, is the Pink Memories sweater by Isabel Kramer, which is five, about six, it's about six euros, which is about fibre. It's beautiful. But I think it's worked flat and I'm not sure how much I would enjoy that. Also, I think I would like a cardigan, but it's a really beautiful pattern. So I'm definitely including that in the patterns that have come onto my radar this past month. Another one that was suggested was the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit, which is 45 Danish kroners, which is about £5.50. It's for worsted weight or it's a DK plus a lace. It's a knitted pattern. It's seamless and it's oversized and it's definitely a style that I can see my daughter Lilia really liking. I really like that pattern. Another one that was suggested was the Granite Cardigan by Katarina Linhagen. Um, it's 80 Swedish Krona, which is about six pounds. Again, it's written for DK yarn. It's a knitted pattern. It's got absolutely gorgeous wider ribbing all the way around it. I really, really like that one actually. Then there's the Larch Cardigan by Amy Christoffers, which is $7, which is about £6. It's a sport weight one, it's a knitted pattern. It's really original, it's got a really interesting wide sort of collar, like a lifted collar at the top. But when I looked at, because when I went to look at all these patterns, I sort of look at the project notes and see what everyone's path, uh, projects look like and read them. And the project notes were a little bit frightening for that one. They, it made it sound very complicated and it did put me off a bit because I was a bit like oh, I'm not sure I'm up to that task but it's a beautiful pattern. Another one that was suggested it was the Moona Cardi by Tony Lipsy, $7.50 which is about £6.50. It's a DK Tunisian crochet uh, cardigan. It's cropped and it's got a really lovely honeycomb detail on it. I think this would be a really fun challenge actually. Uh, I like Tunisian crochet, but I hardly ever do it. So I think that would be really interesting. I really like that one. And another one I really loved was the Everyday Cotton Cardigan by Ashley Kaiser. It's a free pattern. It's crochet. It's designed for DK yarn, or I suppose you could hold something, you could hold four ply or fingering weight double. It's a very much a beginner pattern and it's an oversized cardigan. It's really lovely and the, the variations that people have made on the pattern on Ravelry are really, really interesting. There's different sort of lengths and different, like some people made it with really short sleeves, uh, got stripes or blocks and yeah, I really liked that one. I'm very tempted by that. See, look, I'm, I'm tempted mostly again by the crochet, aren't I? I think I'm, I'm sort of veering towards crochet at the moment. And then I was given a couple of socks, uh, a couple of socks, a couple of patterns, sock patterns as gifts, and they are so beautiful. So one of them I was allowed to choose. So Inika Voskamp, who is Lunaster Knit, has donated a couple of patterns for the Strictly, Strictly Sock Along. Why can't I use words today? The Strictly Sock Along. <laughs> the Strictly Sock Along. She has donated a couple of patterns and she also said if I would like to pick one of her patterns I was most welcome to. And I knew immediately when I looked at all of her patterns which one I wanted and that was her hydrangea socks. It's such a pretty pattern and the pattern on the leg 
flows into the pattern on the heel, which just, I don't know, it, it scratches a certain thing in my brain and makes me feel happy. They are beautiful. So I, I wanted to mention those. They're four euros, uh, which is about £3.60 at the moment. And the other ones I were gifted. No. <laughs> what kind of sentence was that? The other pair of socks I was given as a gift. Yeah, and that works, doesn't it? Were the Magical Mycelium socks by Stone Knits. They're five Swiss francs, which is about five pounds. Uh, they were a gift from Kim and they are stunning. They are covered in toadstools and the different colour variations in the project page, in the project pages are just outstanding. People are so clever with their colour choices. There's one pair that was made with like grey and pink and they are so pretty. And then there's other ones made with bright greens and dark yellows, uh, dark yellows and reds and Oh, they're just fantastic. I would highly recommend you go and have a look at the project pages uh, for that, that pair of socks because you will have a nice time. <laughs> Strictly Sock Along. Let's talk about the Strictly Sock Along. I have a whole spreadsheet here on my notion of prizes. It took me so long to do this this morning. In fact, you can see I've got a cup of tea here. I've got my Strictly Socks mug, which was made for me by Adele at Toadstool House Art. I'm going to link her shop underneath. She has the most glorious uh, sort of kitsch and whimsical things that she makes. She helped me turn my design into a proper design that I could then get printed. And then as a gift, she, hand, she printed me my own mug. And I love it. I just love it. I use it all the time. But I spent so much time sorting out all the prizes that I drank my tea. So really, this is just here for show now. Just so I have a mug in the background because, you know, crochet and knitting podcast. <laughs> You've got to have a cup of tea. I really would like another one, but I mean, I'm on a roll now, so we'll keep going. So we're two months into the Strictly Sock Along. We're two months into this podcast, it feels like. And it is, it has just been joyous. The things you're sharing on Instagram, the cheating, the beautiful yarn, the projects, Everything that's turning up, there's about 100, there's 110 finished objects when I checked this morning in the Ravelry finished objects thread. And there are over, I think there are about 1,300 posts in the chatter thread. So fun to look at. I do drop in to see what you're all talking about. Uh, and I need to get in there and sort of get involved as well, I think. Now that October's over, I might have a bit more time to do that. But it's just so nice to go in and read. And the pictures and the cheating and the friendships that are being made in there. And just, everyone's just so fun and they really take the whole spirit of it to heart and it's just really lovely to follow and if you if you want to join in by the way it's a really long sock along i'll put all the details underneath but basically we knit or crochet socks uh during the months of september october november december which coincides with the uk strictly come dancing which is otherwise known as dancing with the stars across the world i think and the idea is you, you make them whilst watching Strictly, but actually it's not really about that anymore. It's more about how badly you can cheat. <laughs> so you might want to watch them whilst watching Strictly. You might want to make them whilst watching Strictly, but you also might have other things. And actually I'm going to pull out one prize, a little early cheating prize today in a minute uh, for some exceptional tenuous links to uh, Strictly whilst knitting. Uh, yeah, and then you can either use the hashtag on Instagram or you can chat in the chatter thread on Ravelry or you can post your finished objects. And I will be drawing prizes from across all those three things uh, or three places. So there's plenty of opportunity to win and get involved. So because I was doing a little bit of prep uh, for the Strictly, for talking about the Strictly, Strictly Sock Along, I spent quite a nice time last night looking through Instagram at all the posts that have been popping up and through Ravelry as well. But I thought I'd share some of my favourite posts from Instagram and next time I'll probably share some of my favourite ones from Ravelry that kind of caught my attention as I was looking through and put up some pictures as well because that might be fun if you're joining in to see your beautiful project appear on the screen. So the first one that caught my eye, actually there was two from this person, it's Tony and she has knits a lot on Instagram. She made two pairs of gorgeous socks. Uh, the first was a pair of Nightmare Before Christmas themed socks and the picture she took was just brilliant. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. In fact, we had a bit of a Nightmare Before Christmas theme when we got married, Dan and I, 20 years ago this month. Uh, we had like quotes from the film and everything on our wedding stationery. 
uh, yeah so it means I, I, I love that because it's a, a film very close to my heart and she also made the most glorious self-striping socks and the yarn is from Luna Pearl Yarns and I think they are based in California so I just wanted to show those because if you're in the US and um, you might be interested in that yarn company because they were beautiful another one that caught my eye was from Tara Q Knits uh, and I just really loved this particular image because it was knitting and cooking and it was just so typically sort of knitting life that I had to include it. I just really liked the fact that she was waiting for her stew to cook whilst knitting on her Strictly socks. I also spotted one from Knitting Purple, uh, which really, really made me laugh because she said in the caption that I can work on them whenever I want because the chicken said it was okay, <laughs> which I thought was really funny because quite frankly, no one can disprove that, can they? So that's a perfectly good cheat and I enjoyed that. Uh, another one was from V Anderson 63. She made uh, some gorgeous socks using the Mild Grinch colorway from Timber Yarns. So I wanted to include that as well because I thought the, the yarn was beautiful. Really like those. And finally, there was one from Marissa Dawn Designs. Uh, she was just casually knitting on Instagram, wearing her sparkly shoes, like, you know, feet up, sparkly dancing shoes on, having a little knit on her Strictly socks. It just really made me smile. So those are just some of my favourite ones that, that popped up on Instagram. There's lots more than that, but we'd be here all week if I covered all of them. And we've got some prizes to draw. So let's get on with it. I am going, I've got to draw the prizes for the first tens. So we had the first ten quite early on in Strictly, and it was for... I'm just trying to remember the dance. Oh yeah, it was Men in Black. So it was uh, Karen Hower was the professional, and Eddie Caddy who's now, who's now sadly gone. Uh, they got the first 10 in week three from Shirley, which was amazing in week three. It's quite unusual, it was very, very early, but it was a good dance. It wasn't my favorite dance of the night, but then I was, I'm gonna say Shirley Ballas knows a lot more than me about dancing. So that was the first 10. And then we, we suddenly had, the, that was like the lid out of the bottle, the, the cork out of the bottle then, because we had loads of 10s. Right, just cut a bit there because I went and found a website that tells me the tens that have been awarded because we're going to nerd out here. If there's any time of year that I can fully nerd out about Strictly, now is the time. And now my battery has gone. I mean, are we surprised? Not really. And I'm going to have to go and disassemble this whole setup in order to change my battery. So give me one second and then we'll have a bit of nerding out, okay? It's about 10 minutes later now. We're just going to have a little break, okay? I'm having a mince pie. <laughs> I was getting, my tummy was rumbling. I don't eat the innards though, so I've scraped the innards out. I just like the pastry. I like the taste of it, I just don't like the texture. I don't like raisins. I should have made myself a cup of tea actually. It's nearly lunchtime though, so I'll probably just wait and have, a, have some water with my lunch. Just gonna watch me eat a mince pie now. Hmm. Hmm. Lovely. It was the girls that wanted mince pies. And I said it was too early, but now I'm very glad they did suggest it. Okay, so whilst I was getting my mince pie and changing my battery, I also did a little bit of statistics, which I probably should have done before. Uh, but I didn't realize how much it would matter to me to actually get this right. <laughs> so after the initial first 10 in week three, uh, for Eddie. In week four, Leighton then got a 10 for his char char char, which was amazing, and his outfit was amazing. In week five, Leighton got three tens for his salsa, which again was amazing, and Ellie got one ten for her Paso Doble. Then in week six, which was the Halloween week, Ellie got two tens for her salsa when she was completely green. It was so good. It was the best dance of the night for me that I loved it. And then in week seven, which is just gone, Ellie got three tens for her American Smooth, which again was just amazing. I loved it. And Leighton got two for his jive, which again, I, it was incredible. The whole point of this, which has probably taken me now about 10 minutes to say what should take two seconds, is that I need to draw a prize because the first 10 has been drawn. So I have got three prize packages for the first 10 category. And I have drawn all the winners. I did it just before I started filming and I've got them all written down here. And I did it all using 
our friend, our AI friend, whose name I won't say for fear of setting it off. So the first prize for the first 10 was to be drawn randomly from the Ravelry chatter thread. However, I did decide to draw an extra one from the Instagram hashtag as well because it has been so well used and I thought it would be unfair to leave the people chatting on Instagram out. So the first prize is from the Ravelry chatter thread and it was number 573 and that was Tanya at what I created next who has been really chatty so I am not surprised I see her name popping up all the time and Tanya you're in the UK and you have won you have won the well is the answer yarn where is it I put it all in separate little bags this morning so it's all ready to go but it's also all ready to show you so Wool is the answer, I've done their Strictly colourway this year, it is called Char Char Char. How fitting, given that Leighton got his 10 for his Char Char Char, his first 10. It is glorious, I have my own skein of this. It's a DK weight and it comes with this beautiful mini as well. Does the mini have a name? Did I ask that last time? No, it's just Strictly Mini. Beautiful. So that's what you've won, Tanya. And thank you very much to Dominique and Marie at Wool is the Answer for the beautiful prize and for your lovely videos. I always love catching up with them. Then the second prize was number 1015, and that was lovely Jan, the mother thing. She's so creative, and I'll put up Oh no, I won't actually, because this is the chatter thread, so there won't be any pictures, it'll just be chattering. I was going to say I'll put up pictures of their socks. I'll do that with the next category. Uh, so you have won the second prize for the first 10, and that is a combination of a pattern and some yarn. So you have won the Green Lampkin Yarn Latin Love, one of the official Strictly Sock Along yarns this year, in the Sparkle base. I've seen a few people have knit this up and it looks so lovely. So that is Latin Love. It's beautiful. It's by Suzanne at Green Lumpkin Yarn. I will link everyone I mention underneath. You have won this and also you have won a prize, a pattern. You can choose any one of uh, Becky at Becky Dixon Designs sock patterns. If you just let me know which one, uh, if you, I'll link her underneath so you can go and have a look at her Ravelry and let me know which I know you're on Ravelry so let me know which one you would like and I will have Becky send that directly to you and I will send this to you obviously all pattern winners please email me your address uh, it's a much easier way to communicate with me I find Instagram messages so difficult to stay on top of because of the way that Instagram does it it's a very basic method of sorting and I find it really easy to miss things so the best way to contact me about anything is by email and that my email is in the description box underneath I have been saying that for a long time without it being in the description box underneath but I will make sure it's there it's also in my about tab on my page so if you email me if you, your address I will know where to send it uh, so that's what you won that's for Jan and then the third prize which I drew from Instagram and I did this by loading up all the posts under the hashtag and then I went, I closed my eyes and just kept going up and down, up and down, up and down and then I did that. And it brought up, I was really happy about this because when I was looking through the Instagram hashtag, I noticed that this person had done many socks and they were beautiful. They were some of my favourite ones. And that is Toronto. I'm guessing you're in Toronto. <laughs> uh, she, and the post that came up was her post on the 6th of October when she was casting on Opal Country Colour 11296 on Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, I'll also pop up a picture of the finished socks as well because they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, so Gail, you have won. Oh, this is a lovely prize. And hopefully if you get in touch with me with your address nice and quickly, I'll be able to get this sent to you in time for the beginning of December in case that's when you want to use it because it is a 12 day countdown. Uh, from my friend Kate had this and she can't remember where she got it from so I'm going to stay vague about where it might be from but I do know of the dyer she thinks it might be from you're not going to be disappointed it's a 12 day advent countdown and 
yeah so get in touch with me as quickly as you can and i will get that posted out to you because then you'll have it in time if you want to open it in the lead up to christmas and along with this as well i'm going to give you a pattern prize that's been donated by sophie at spring snowflake uh she is sophie swan and her podcast is a spring snowflake and her patterns that she designs i think are under a spring snowflake design she's on pay hip i will link her underneath so you can go and choose what pattern you would like if you let me know and then I'll put you in touch with Sophie and she'll send that pattern to you directly. And I thought it'd be really good because I know that Sophie has patterns that are really good to make with Advents. She's got like the Giddy Quinn Cow and the Decidedly Undecided Cow, I think it's called. Uh, they're both crochet patterns, but I thought that would be really good uh, to go with this. So that's your prize. We then have the Made It to Halloween prize, which is for, uh, drawn from those who had finished socks in the finished objects thread by midnight on Halloween. So I have drawn two prizes for that. And again, I use our AI, AI friend who was obviously feeling in a kind of rounding up mood because she drew posts number 40 and number 30. So number 40, is LMS123, who is Liana in Ontario in Canada. She made the most beautiful elf socks. They are lovely, I'll put a picture up. And Liana, you have won, you have won the pumpkin patch yarn. I'm so jealous. I am so jealous of this. I wish I'd bought myself some when I was there at the Southern Wool Show. So James at James Makes Yarn, uh, donated this as a prize when I met him and fangirled all over him at the Southern Wall Show. It's called Pumpkin Patch, so I thought it's the ideal prize for the Halloween prize. It's beautiful. I've got a little card that comes with it there as well. And he's also donated his pattern, which is called the Bubblegum, yeah, the Bubblegum Socks pattern as well. I'll put a picture up of what it looks like. Uh, to go with it so if you let me oh no i've got your ravelry name so i'll have james send that directly to you and if you let me know your address i will get the yarn sent to you the next one was number 30 another round number and that was alex alto there was no info on this ravelry account but i recognized the socks so i'm pretty sure this is alexandra from mouse in paris who has actually donated a prize as for the Strictly Sock Along, so that's lovely when that happens. Uh, because I saw these socks on Instagram, I think, in a vineyard in Burgundy. It was the first time I've ever been jealous of a pair of socks. So I'm pretty sure this is Alexandra that's won this prize. So get in touch with me, Alexandra. I think I already have your address. It might have been on your return parcel, but just in case I haven't made a note of it, please get in touch with me so I can send that out to you. I should actually say, shouldn't I, what you've won? So <laughs> you are the winner. But it'd be quite nice to know what you've won, wouldn't it? Yes, I think so. You have won the Halloween set from Green Lumpkin Yarn. She is selling these this year in her shop and she's also got a Christmas one, which I also have as a prize for next time. It's a little parcel of joy. So you've got one of her Halloween yarns. This is the Witchy Woo colourway. I'm not going to take it out of the packet because it's also nice in there. You've got various warm drinks. You have coffee, tea and hot chocolate. And you've got one of her amazing bag charms. It's got candy corn, beads, a little pumpkin and everything. It's all Halloween themed. So that will be on its way to you, Alexandra, once I hear from you. And then I decided to draw a early cheating prize because there was one that caught my eye that really made me laugh. So I've got some gorgeous yarn from the Curated Yarn Company. And again, this was at the Southern Wool Show. I was chatting to Stevie, who runs the Curated Yarn Company. And she said I could pick any skein I liked as a prize for the Strictly Sock Along. And I had some help and I chose Marvellous Mrs. Maisel. A beautiful, oh, just jewel tones so saturated so lovely that's from the curated yarn company i've also got a little card here to put with it uh, and this is for the, the cheating prize and i'm just going to bring up the cheating because it did make me laugh so much so i decided i'm going to award this to a Beebs. that is your name i've no idea what your real name is or where you are you have no information on your ravelry but hopefully you are watching uh, this is her first pair, I'll put a picture up as I'm talking, it's her first pair of Strictly socks. 
After years of trying, this crochet I finally learned to knit during the TV coverage of King Charlie's coronation, and now the sock knitting bug has bitten me. The pattern is Hermione's Everyday Socks and the yarn is Shuffle Wool Edition 3 English Garden. The cheat is that I knit these travelling in Europe, which, as an Australian, is physically the closest I have ever been to Strictly. Also, I knit the majority of them in conversation with a man whose accent was remarkably similar to Craig Revel Horwood. <laughs> that was just so random and so tenuous that it deserves a prize. So whoever you are, ABs, please get in touch with me by email and you have won a prize for your cunning, underhand, terrible tactics. Well done. <laughs> and that is the Strictly Sock Along. I've also got some new prizes to share with you that have come in. I'm going to read them out, but I'm going to do a little overlay, little video overlay, because I think that's going to be much better than me holding them up and faffing about and pressing the focus and everything. So as I talk, I will put some pictures up over my face. Oh dear, I've just realised that I was going to give it to you in order of how they've come in, but I was playing about with all the order of how I was going to give out the prizes this morning, so now it's all over the place. So I'm going to have to go from my memory which is not going to go well. So if I miss anyone out that hasn't already been mentioned previously, I do apologise. Oh, so first of all, don't forget there's a 20% uh, discount off sock patterns for the entire duration of the Strictly Sock Along from Becky Dixon Designs. The code is Strictly20 on Ravelry and I will link that underneath. So I showed the Halloween uh, yarn set from Green Lampkin Yarns earlier, but she also sent a Christmas set as well, which is beautiful. So that's going to be a pattern for the Blackpool prize, which I'll draw next time. I'm also going to put with that a pattern prize, which is the Quinn's Memory Socks. Now I want to mention this now because it was uh, donated by Sam at Weaver Makes. I think it's her first ever knitted pattern. I'll put a picture up of it here. I've shared it on my Instagram as well. Uh, it will be a prize next time, but also it's on sale now and all the profits raised from it go to a charity called For Louis. And it's a UK based ch bereavement charity supporting families following stillbirth and it's a charity that does obviously very good work and it's a charity that I think helped uh, Sam herself when they experienced it uh, last year so I just wanted to mention that now and put a link to that underneath because obviously it's a really great cause. I've got uh, some prizes coming from Emma at Eldrenwood Craft but I don't have those yet to share uh, but they will be drawn in the next uh, episode. I can't say anything about them at the moment but make sure you tune in at the beginning of December because they're amazing. Oh, I had a bag donated from Conchetta at Butternut Handmade and I'm putting this with some yarn from my friend Kate, which she sent to me from Bellica Yarns. Uh, it's gorgeous. Conchetta's bags are beautiful and this one is no exception and it's really big as well. So it'd be perfect for sweater projects or blanket projects or you know, lots and lots of socks in one bag. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for that, Conchetta. I also received a bag from Alexandra at uh, Mouse in Paris, uh, who just won a prize, so that's brilliant. And the bag is gorgeous. I will link her Etsy shop underneath. She's based in France, I'm assuming in Paris, because on Instagram she is Parisian Mum Life. And the bag is gorgeous. She also sent me a little one, which I will hold up and show you. Uh, I showed this in Vogtober, but I'm going to show it again because it's so lovely. She made me this little envelope pouch. Look at that with a little, it's like a little camping outdoor. Look at the fox. He's playing the ukulele. I love it so much. It reminds me a bit of that um, game that my girls play where they're on an island and they've got little animals that play the tambourine. I can't remember what it's called. Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing. And then look at the stitch markers that she's put on there. Like a yellow leaf, a yellow pumpkin, and a yellow enamel pumpkin. Oh, it's just so lovely. And it's it does up with a little popper, and then it's got like spotty linings. So that was a little one she sent as an extra for me. Oh, I just love it. So that's for Mouse in Paris. And I also got from Linda, I got a uh, autumn doodle card deck which she bought from Cooks and Crafts. Cooks and Crafts are, I believe are now going to be stocking these and it's a way of doing colour work and building your own colour work designs. It's such a clever idea and Linda also sent a sheep coaster to go with it. 
and I'm putting it with a lovely big sparkle bag uh, that was donated by a lovely viewer of this podcast called Julie. So that's going to be one prize parcel as well. Uh, I've also got a beautiful bag from Nicola Knits over at uh, Stitches and Slapdashery, which I am going to make into a, a prize parcel with the Ballroom Bliss Sparkle Yarn, which is one of the official Strictly Sock Along colourways this year, words. Uh, I'm going to put that together as a prize. I think that's everything I've had come in. I'm sorry if I've missed anyone, I've not shown it. Uh, but I have shown all the prizes, so that probably is everything. But if I have missed you out, please do shout at me and let me know. I feel like I have not... I feel like this every time I film, film a podcast. I get towards the end and I think, this feels like it was rubbish. <laughs> I hope it was enjoyable. I hope I shared some interesting things. I hope I've inspired you with some patterns or some yarns or something. I've just got a few things to uh, to mop up at the end in... And finally, so thank you, first of all, if you joined me for Vlogtober. I really, really loved it. I love doing daily vlog series. It was so much fun. Despite being ill for the last couple of weeks of it, I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm still on antibiotics. I seem to have been on them, it feels like, for a year, but it's only been two weeks. I'm taking my last ones the day after tomorrow, and I'm really looking forward to it because they have not made me feel good, but they have worked. So that's the main thing. So if you're along for Vlogtober, thank you. And I've had a lot of questions asking if I'm doing Vlogmas. And yes, I have. I love Vlogmas. It makes me feel festive and the girls love it too, my two girls. So yeah, we'll definitely be doing Vlogmas. So join join me over on This Little Wonderful Life if you're interested in that. Uh, and also just a reminder that on the 1st of January, it's some time off yet, but just in case you're already worrying about what you will do when the sparkle of the Strictly Sock Along dies away, in the last embers of New Year's fireworks. 1st of January, cosy blanket make along that I'm running with my lovely friend Cherie over at Ollie and Bella will start. It's gonna run until the 29th of February because it's a leap year next year. And the chatter thread will open. We were trying to work out the best time to do this and I've just realized I haven't replied to Cherie so I'm just gonna decide now. <laughs> The chatter thread is going to be in Cherie's group and we'll open it on the 1st of December so that you can all start chatting about anything that, like the yarn that you're gathering and things that you have planned. That'll be quite good actually because Advent yarns lend themselves a lot to blanket projects, don't they? So they can sort of be deciding about that and discussing your advents and uh, you can start using the hashtag right away, which is Cozy Winter Blanket Along 23. Uh, I'm really looking forward to making my plans for that. I'm really looking forward to that this year. I also wanted to mention my Nano. I bought an electric eel Nano spinner at the Southern Wool Show in September and I was so excited about it and I haven't used it yet. It's one of those things, I, I put it on the table and I look at it and I think, oh, I can't wait to use it. And then I've got to Hoover, I'll put the laundry on or sort out some stuff at the charity shop or you know, sort out the Strictly prizes, which you know, don't get me wrong, it's a very fun thing to do, but it all takes time. And then I, it just keeps put, getting pushed back and back. I just need some time to sit down and really enjoy it. So I'm hoping next time I might have a little bit of spinning to share with you on that. But yes, I can't wait to use it, but I need a badge that just says really slow cre creative or like really slow maker. That's me. Just everything I do takes me about five times the amount of time that it takes everybody else. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Thank goodness. We're at the end. And I hope the sound has been all right. And I will see you in the next video. I'm probably going to make an extra little video or two this month. But watch out for those. Because uh, they, they might pop up in the next week or so. Uh, before the end of November. Oh, Dan's calling me. But I don't want to talk to him because I'm recording sound on my mobile. I'll talk to him in a minute. I will say goodbye to you and go and call my husband. So I will see you again in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know underneath what you're working on, what your Strictly cheats are, whether you've made a virus shawl, and to get in touch with me if you've won a prize. I always, always love to hear from you. Um, and thank you very much. Bye. I can't believe I forgot to say what I always say at the end of every video. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>